ողջույն, սա վիվայմ դայսի պոտքաստի հերթական էպիզոդն է, ուրախը մի եթե միացել եք մեզ։ Այսօր մեր պոտքաստը կրկին անգլեր են լեզվով է լինելու, որով հետև իմ հյուրը դրևս հայեր են չի խոսում։ Իմ հյուրը Մատյու զեին է, ով լայվ Digital nomadism in Armenia, specifically for digital nomad families, relocating from all over the world. Thanks very much for accepting this uh, opportunity and becoming our guest for the Viva MTS podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's a big pleasure. Matt is a freelance, creative and business-oriented English content writer uh, currently residing in Yerevan. And we're basically going to talk about his life in Armenia, his magazine, how he basically uh, founded the magazine, where the idea came from, and what's like the scope of his work currently. Uh, Matt, you're writing blog like blog articles that rank number one on Google in their respective categories. Uh, but I know that you're an engineer. So how you achieve these results? So first of all, like I graduated information technology engineering. So that's my profession in college, but I've never worked as an IT engineer. So I got, let's say, another interest, which is English linguistics, and that was writing. So I pursued my second degree. I got a degree in English linguistics, and that's how I became writing for the IT companies, like writing for the tech industry in specific. And that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. I follow more like a journalistic approach in writing, and that's what makes like the articles rank number one, because when you have an added value in the article, it naturally ranks on Google. How you arrived to Armenia? I mean, how you decided to come and stay here? Can you tell about this interesting story? So I've been moving like around the world in different cities and countries for the last almost like 15 years. And for the most part of it, it was with, with my wife. And most recently before relocating to Armenia, I was in the United Arab Emirates in Dubai and before that in China. And my wife and I were just visiting a friend in Armenia in 2017. So it was only a seven days trip. We just planned to spend some time here, meet some friends and just like tour around. And we never had a plan to actually reside in Armenia or to even live that long in Armenia. But those seven days, they became seven years and we've been living here like since then. A life changing trip. You came and stayed here. It was never planned. I mean, I still remember her like walking the first day in Northern Avenue and she said like, do you think we can stay here? And I just reached out to an accountant, a lawyer, asked about the taxes, the residencies and everything. And it was amazing. And we decided that, yes, we can try it. And we thought it's going to be like maybe like a year or two before we go somewhere else. We already had our plans to go to Canada, but we kind of became part of the community in here and now i believe it's hard to even travel outside so nowadays when we go somewhere else we call it tourism and when we're back to armenia we call it home so it became our home away from home that's very nice to hear but matt uh what is it like to be a foreigner and to live in armenia so first of all let me tell you this like secret i don't speak armenian and my wife doesn't speak armenian and we've been living here for seven years so how does it like Feel to be living in here, it's the same. We've never felt foreigners in Armenia. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking only about Yerevan. I've been to different Armenian cities in the north and in the south, and I've only used English or let's say sometimes some like body language to communicate with others. And it has been amazing. Everyone was welcoming, friendly. We never had any issues or, or anything. But what are your plans? Like, do you plan to study Armenian? Actually, for me, I don't think so. Like. All the work I do is in English, but my wife has already started learning Armenian. We had our kid last year and now she wants to learn the language because she wants to follow up like on the education and everything as he grows up and, you know, he's going to go to Armenian schools and we have to make sure like she understands everything's happening. That's great. Can you please tell me what are you doing for a living? You're a writer, but like uh, you're a free a freelance, creative and business oriented English content writer. Like, are you working with Armenians? Uh, what was the path? Because I know that when you resided in Armenia, you were working with other clients, international clients. So how did you start your collaborations with Armenian clients? So I can tell you that I committed a mistake that when we resided in Armenia, we never actually like engaged in the community in the first couple of years. And that was our mistake. We thought like, it's okay, it's a nice country, we can live here, but we don't have to communicate with others that much. So until 2020, I've never had an Armenian client. Now starting 2020, I promoted my services in Armenia and surprisingly, the demand was great. 
and the let's call it the, the work ethics i found in armenia were amazing people were professionals i'm talking about the it industry because like often those are my clients so the professionalism i sensed in here and collaborating with companies it companies was great and gradually i started dropping all my international clients i used to work mostly with clients in the us and now all my clients are in armenia i would say 90 percent of my clients now are armenian clients and 10 percent are only like the international ones that i had from before so it's mostly it companies software development applications so those companies who want to let's say they want the world to see them so they want to communicate better sometimes using blog articles sometimes using website content sometimes different kind of mailing or if it's written content, that's what I do. I mean, I don't have to do with marketing or visuals. I only do with words, and that's what I specialize in. And since I understand information technology, I can relate to whatever they're talking about so I can understand their vision and then transcribe that vision to their clients or potential clients outside. But um, did you mention about your education? Because besides being an engineer, you also have a degree from the Cambridge University, right? Yes, so that is the English linguistics. I can, as I told you, when I graduated information technology, I didn't feel like I can become an engineer, like I can work as an engineer. I'm someone who likes expressing things more. I like talking more, probably like about feelings, about emotions, about, about different things, but I'm someone who writes. So that's why I pursued English linguistics. And right now I'm working on my PhD. I still like haven't started, but I'm working to probably start by the end of maybe next year or mid next year, it's in the psychology of sales. And I'm trying to make it like a full circle so I can actually communicate with people's minds when I'm writing for IT companies. Matt, was it hard for you to find collaborations in Armenia? Because like, you know, you are a foreigner. It's just interesting for me um, how you were approaching the Armenians because Armenians prefer to, you know, hire the locals. Uh, so can you tell about this? To be honest, it was the easiest and simplest process so first of all i never followed any complicated marketing no complicated campaigns i just followed the simplest way a facebook post and just a couple of promotions and i'm not talking about heavy promotions i didn't have funds by that time so i only did like ten dollars by time and it was a good written content with a good poster i asked a designer to make a good poster to express the idea i had in mind and just i started promoting it in yerevan and i started getting clients and then it moved to linkedin and the Armenian community on LinkedIn was amazing. So there is a lot of, let's say, it's like a big community there. And all my clients are part of that community. So I started reaching out through LinkedIn. And again, the very simple way. I haven't done any like complicated campaigns and it worked. That's just amazing. You have to inspire others too. Now we're moving forward towards the important part, the Life in Armenia magazine, which became so popular on LinkedIn. Were you actually expecting the results? So by the way, the magazine wasn't even planned to go that far. For me, I was just doing something I like. So every once in a while, I publish an article about Armenia. It's something about what I feel in here and I receive a lot of questions from people abroad. Sometimes they are interested in collaborating with Armenian companies, interested in hiring from Armenia. And since I'm a foreigner living here, I receive those questions. And people tend to ask the foreigner those questions because they will get, let's say, a more authentic answer. And when I saw that there was an interest, I started writing articles. The first one was last year. I wanted to write an article about opening back offices in Armenia for companies abroad. I ended up conducting 100 interviews with 100 CEOs in the States, in Canada, in Armenia, those who opened back offices in Armenia. And the article ranked number one in 40 days because of the amount of valuable content inside. From that article, I moved to another one, which is hiring remotely from Armenia. And it just like one thing led to another. And I was like, so since I have all those articles and I'm interested in digital nomadism as a lifestyle, whether it's inside Armenia or outside Armenia, what about putting everything together into a magazine and promoting the country as a destination? So for me, I never expected I would stay here for seven years and probably for many years in the future, but I did. And I want others to feel the same thing. So that's why I called it Life in Armenia for Digital Nomad Families. Because when people are looking for a good place for their children, looking for a destination that's family friendly, Armenia pops up on the map surprisingly even for non-Armenians. I'm not talking about Armenian diaspora. I'm talking about foreigners who find Armenia by doing some research and they decide to relocate. 
who are digital nomads. So digital nomads are everyone who works remotely and they keep traveling from one place to another around the world or sometimes even within inside their own countries. So it's everyone who doesn't have a specific place to work from. You are free from a space, free from an office. You can go sometimes to the beach, sometimes to another city, sometimes to another country and keep doing your work. And that's the difference between them and tourists. So a tourist only spends a limited time to do some tourist activities, to enjoy their time. Meanwhile, digital nomads, they keep their work on. So they have some sort of work-life balance. They have to work during the day or during the night and they have to enjoy their life. And that's the difference between them and between tourists. Yeah, I think that's that became very popular, especially after the COVID, right? Actually, it is. And, you know, there are like the statistics say that there are almost 35 million digital nomads worldwide. So you're talking about a huge number of people moving from one country to another. And many countries have noticed this as a great national income. So they started attracting digital nomads, promoting programs to attract them, because when they come to some place, they spend money. They pay taxes sometimes if they stay like for longer periods and they become part of the community. So they bring their experience, they benefit and the community benefits from them. It's a win-win situation. And many countries like Estonia, like the United Arab Emirates, Croatia and others, they did these programs and they succeeded like on a very great level. That's very interesting that you came up with a goal to bring digital nomads to Armenia and make the country attractive to them. But why do you think they should be attracted to come and, you know, just work and live for some period in Armenia? So first of all, let me just make something clear. Armenia already has digital nomads. Maybe they are, let's say, they go by the name remote workers or travelers because there is no specific digital nomads program. But there are many digital nomads in here. Many of them are Russians. Many are from different countries. They relocate here. They work, they stay for like temporary time and they leave. And why Armenia? Because all the conditions in here are great for a digital nomad. I mean, first of all, about how easy it is to relocate to Armenia. You don't need any income. I mean, income statement. For example, any other countries, they have income restrictions for digital nomads. The taxations are higher than in Armenia. In Armenia, the tax system is reasonable. You can get to the country without an income restriction or without any limitations. You can get residencies. So although it's not called a digital nomad program, it offers more features than the real digital nomad programs of other countries have at the moment. And when you talk about culture, affordability, I mean, those are things that we, we all know about Armenia living in here. I mean, it's a great place to live. And for children, and that's why I'm targeting those like with families, it's a children-friendly country. The culture, the balance between being a free country and a conservative one, the safety you have here in schools. So I receive those questions all the time from people asking like, sometimes those questions might sound like, very strange for someone living in here like how safe are armenian schools or like how many shootings happened in armenian schools like for the last 10 years and the answer is like none so that's surprising for me like is it that safe so yes like schooling is safe in here i'm not saying anything about like how good is it but i'm saying it is safe and that's number one priority for many families the safety Yes, indeed, we're very lucky because Armenia is very safe and we have the echo food, we are very hospitable. And basically, yeah, I'm very happy that you have started this program and I really hope it will just, you know, go viral and we will have more and more digital nomads coming and living in Armenia. Are you mostly focusing on the regions or on the capital? So I'm trying not to focus only on the capital city because, you know, the prices in Yerevan has been increasing recently because of like the rents and everything. And other regions in Armenia, they have so many, let's call it, features that you cannot find in Yerevan at the moment. So that's why I started touring different Armenian cities, touring different Armenian provinces, and trying to think, is it a good place for digital nomads? Like studying its digital nomadism potential. And for the last like two weeks, I've been touring around in Tavush province. I went to Dilijan, Noemberian, Berd, and Ejivan. And I could say that right now my focus is on Ejivan city. I found out it's a great place for digital nomads. I mean, Dilijan already has a lot of them and it has its community. Ejivan has the potential. It has everything it takes for digital nomads to relocate there. And right now I'm collaborating with Tavush DMO, Tavush like tourism development agency in Tavush province. So they can, we can promote Ejivan as a digital nomad destination in a very structured and organized way. How do you basically 
find your interviewees. You're not the only one who writes articles. There are lots of people who share articles who are getting featured in the magazine, right? And you're basically focusing on the same topic. You're basically promoting let Armen that Armenia can become a good country for digital nomads. How do you find the interviewees? Because, you know, you are a foreigner, you're living here, but you've been here for like seven years. Do you find them on LinkedIn, social networks, or you already have like your community, your friends? So let me start with like, what kind of interviews I do, like who are the ones I choose or why do I choose them? So first of all, no one pays to get featured. This is number one, because I always get this question, like, do people pay you to be featured? No, of course not. Everyone I feature in the magazine are people who can influence others to make a decision to move to Armenia. And I find them either through recommendations or LinkedIn research. So I like check people, check different stories, life stories. I try to focus on foreigners living in Armenia because they have their own point of view about the country and sometimes about success stories. So the magazine tries to, let's say, make two things clear. How convenient is Armenia for international residents and how what kind of ecosystem or what kind of work environment Armenia has for those, let's say, aiming to start a business in here or for those aiming to be in an advanced community. And Armenia has like has that. So that's why I always try to get, let's say, some success stories from the Armenian community, try to meet foreigners who relocated to Armenia, ask about their own stories. Because if you want to search online about what makes Armenia a good destination for digital nomads, the answer is already there on Google. So it's affordable. The weather in the summer is very good. The food is great. The people are hospital. But what's beyond that? You have to get the real experiences from people who moved to Armenia. People who were like, I met people from Austria, from the States, from Germany, from Switzerland, from different countries. And they all relocated to Armenia. And I'm talking about non-Armenians, by the way. And many of them are not non-Armenian diasporans. Still, they relocated here and they found themselves. So there is something like every foreigner in Armenia says, they found a purpose of life in Armenia. They found themselves. It's like a, a journey inside themselves. And their life experience is something people are interested in reading. Because when you're like making a decision about moving to a country, you want to hear about what others have experienced in that country, besides what advantages this country offers. And that's what I try to make clear in the magazine. So if someone made a success story, if someone like had a, a family in here, if someone sends their, let's say, kids to school, what kind of education they had, everything. It's about life experiences in Armenia for digital nomad families. That's very interesting. Matt, you already have like five editions, right? Starting from February. Um, that's very, very interesting how you basically made the magazine go viral because all my friends and the community is aware of the magazine. That's really great. But do you also have some statistics maybe or people who contact you and really want to kind of relocate to Armenia? Can you talk about this? So first of all, I don't have, let's say, very accurate or very detailed statistics because when I started this, I did just like the website on my own. And right now I'm engaging some more tools so I can track everything in more detail but I can like tell a couple of light statistics I have so for now we have 4,500 readers and it's only five editions the fifth one was released two days ago so it doesn't count and within the last 100 days or 120 days I conducted more than 52 interviews Many of them are online interviews with people outside Armenia interested in relocating so many people ask questions for example I mean Again, some questions might sound really normal to someone living in Armenia, but like, what kind of education can I expect for my kids in Armenia? Like, for example, is it an inclusive country? What about the women's rights? Can women join companies? Can women work? Those things, for someone who's living in Yerevan, it's already clear. For others, it's not. And that's the, the content that's not available online all the time. I mean, there is content, but there is lack of it. So for those, let's say, 52 interviews, online interviews, it was only about questions about relocating. People sometimes ask about the tax system, and sometimes I don't have the answers because it's very specific, so I refer them to someone who can answer them better. But what I can do is to explain based on my experience. Like, you know, when I came, this is what I pay, this is how I do it, this is how I made it. And and again, it's, it enriches their vision about the country and it makes it more probable that they will try to, to relocate to Armenia. By the way, I have already met a couple of people in Yerevan who actually relocated to Armenia. But I mean, they just did it for like a week or two and they are experiencing the place considering is it a good place or not. But it was a good step forward to know that I've been able to attract people and meet them in here when we became friends. I mean, that's a big step forward for me. And I know it's small. 
but I hope it will keep growing because other countries have made it and it had significant results like the Croatian Digital Nomad program. It had made significant results in the digital nomadism in the country with something between 5,000 and 10,000 digital nomads flying to Croatia every month. So that's great numbers. I mean, if we can get a slight share of this number to Armenia, to different Armenia provinces, that's great. Thanks very much. It's very motivating and very inspiring and I wish you a lot of luck. Uh, Matt, um, I have another question for you. Uh, in your last edition, which I read, that was really nice, you have an article that discusses the business etiquette to work with Armenians. Do you have any specific things you would like to highlight? So by the way, this question is one of the most popular questions I receive from people abroad and it's mostly from Armenian diaspora. They are interested in relocating or interested in collaborating with Armenian companies in the tech industry and they always ask like, what is the business etiquette to work with companies in Armenia? And I'm talking about those who have, I mean, they want to do it, but they still have this hesitation because they want some answers. and. For me, I always answer them that there is no specific etiquette, just like send an email, do it the same way on a professional level you do with companies in North America or in Europe. It's the same way. People in Armenia have the same level of professionalism and sometimes it's even more than companies I've worked with abroad. And to answer the question, let's say through Canadian eyes, I reached out to my friend Christopher Didian in he's a Canadian Armenian and I asked him to like tell about his experience. He's been to Armenia and we, I interviewed him about this specific topic and it was again the same. He said, like, do it the same way you do it with everyone else. There is no specific etiquette. Just reach out to people and seek collaboration on a professional level and you will get it. So, I mean, this is the answer. I mean, there is no specific etiquette. Armenia is as professional as other countries and sometimes, again, even more. I've worked with companies all over the world and I enjoy working with Armenians more than others. And to be honest, what I enjoy is the in-person meetings. It's amazing to meet people like in person in Armenia, grab a coffee, talk about what you want, talk about the demands and just start working. It's, I mean, I'm not a person who likes online calls. Um, I like offline in-person meetings all the time. This is really great, you know, this is very interesting and I would like to thank you very much for your hard work you're doing. And uh, last question, maybe, can you please tell what are your future plans, if you want to, of course. Sure thing. So once I noticed the interest in Armenia as a digital nomad destination, and I can like clearly tell there is a big interest. People are interested in relocating. And again, I'm not talking only about Armenian diaspora. I'm talking about foreigners who want to move to Armenia, sometimes for a week, sometimes for a month, and sometimes for a year. So I wanted to move forward and make it something on the ground. So right now I'm preparing a program so that we can invite digital nomads from all over the world and we can make it easy for them to relocate and like answer all their questions, make it very like seamless process so they can engage in the Armenian community. And I believe this program will start like within a month or two, hopefully to catch the summertime in Armenia right now. And it's not targeting Yerevan, by the way, we're targeting like Tavush province, specifically in Ejivan city. And of course, then other cities, but I'm starting with one city, which is Ejivan. And the purpose is to show people that they can live outside, like the capital city in other Armenian cities, other provinces, enjoy the nature, and they can like let's say enjoy their digital nomad lifestyle there so hopefully by the end of this summer i will host and welcome like some really popular digital nomads people who can influence others people who have a word in the digital nomad let's say ecosystem who can convince others to move to armenia so that we can base on that for the next season and we can base on that for the next summer of course the winter there are some people who are interested in winter let's say season but again i focus on the summer spring and fall because those are the most promising for digital nomads to relocate to armenia but basically the goal is not to keep them they're just coming and staying here for maybe a semester or i, or I mean like for a shorter period of time or maybe some years uh, do I get it correctly? Actually, the purpose is to bring them. And that's it. I know that Armenia will do like the rest of it. So it's just the same, th the same thing that happened to me. I came here. It was only like a seven days trip and I've been here for seven years. So I want them to come here, spend the day, spend the, a week, spend a month. And the rest of it, Armenia will do its part. And I know that they will fall under the charm, under the spell of the country. And hopefully they'll stay. Armenian hospitality wins it all. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, again, by the way, like there is something I haven't mentioned. I've been married for 10 years, but my wife only said yes to having a child when we were in Armenia. And after spending like some time in here, because she said, now I can feel it's a safe environment. It's a safe place to have a kid. And we had our kid last year. Now he's one year old. 
And the reason for that is like something I mentioned before, like during this interview, it's the balance between being a conservative country and a free one. So we're not talking about a country where people can do anything without limitations. And we're not talking about a strict country. It's a very great balance for people aiming to raise kids in a healthy environment. That's what Armenia offers. And that's what I found that many foreigners are looking for. And this is why they find Armenia. And this is why they move to Armenia. Thanks for sharing the personal story. That's very, very inspiring and very motivating. Um, thanks a lot, Matt, for your time and for your efforts. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for being the guest for our podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me and thanks for all the great work. I'm a big fan, by the way, on LinkedIn. I follow your newsletter. I follow everything you post. And yep, I'm a big fan. Այսօր այսքան եմ էր պոդկաստի համար շնորհակալություն, որ մեզ հետ եք եւ լսում եք, եթե ունեք հարցեր, կարող եք գրել մեզ YouTube-ում, ինչպես նաեւ մեր պոդկաստները հասանելի են Spotify-ում, Google Podcast-ում եւ Vivaim.ai-ի պաշտոնական կայքում։ Մահթում եմ հաջողություն բոլորիդ։